Joining me now is Stephen Mosier, author of The Bully of Asia, and Dinesh D'Souza, conservative commentator and author of the great new book, United States of Socialism. It's different now, Dinesh, but then it's not. Now, you and I were in college in the 1980s, and back then, there were a lot of leftists on campus who were sidling up to the former Soviet Union. Now, you see the same thing happening with China, except there's huge money payoff at the university level. Talk about that. Yeah, China is certainly doing its best to buy influence, uh, not just in uh, universities, but also think tanks and so on. And, and these institutions are proving surpri surprisingly pliable. Now, with Harvard, it's a little bit of a mystery because Harvard by itself has so much money. But Harvard has shown a proclivity, if I may say so, over the decades to sidle up to these uh, totalitarian regimes. If I can pull a single skeleton out of the Harvard closet, uh, in 1934, a Harvard alumnus, a guy named um, Ernst Hanstegel, returned to campus for a Harvard reunion. Now, he was a celebrity because he had just been appointed by Hitler. He was a friend of Adolf Hitler, and he had been appointed the head of Hitler's press office. And so he was a big man on campus. Uh, they proposed to give him a, um, an honorary degree. He met with the Harvard president. There was a faculty reception for him in Boston Harbor uh, against the backdrop of a big German battleship flying the swastika flag. The point I want to make here is that Harvard had no... Today, Harvard would never say a good word about the fascists, but the point is in the 30s, they were perfectly happy to, to uh, genuflect before this new and glamorous fascist mm. regime led by a man named Adolf Hitler. Wow. I, that was in Boston uh, Magazine, I believe, Dinesh. That was a disturbing and fascinating piece at the same time. Dinesh, when you think about what China does, just, just look at the human rights violations. And you compare what, you know, the, some of the horrors in South Africa with apartheid, and the campus was mobilized against apartheid. They had divestment movement in the 80s, and it was really powerful. They were quite effective. Where's the divestment movement from China? Well, the, uh, I think what's going on with the left is you see um, it has um, in a, made strange bedfellows, uh, not just with China, but also with Islamic radicalism, and for the same reason, because the, these are the most illiberal regimes in the world. China is one of the few governments that has a fully totalitarian system in place presiding over a billion people. You can't find that elsewhere on the planet. Uh, the Islamic regimes, we know how illiberal they are. They are against all the values that the left stands for. But... The point here is that foreign policy, fo the politi international politics is a projection of domestic politics. And the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mm. And for this reason, the left sidles up to China, sidles up to the Islamic radicals. Why? Because they're batons with which to sort of beat up on Trump and on the conservative right here domestically in the United States.